Welcome back to this Retro Tech special. We are looking at a Olympus PVM OEV 142, 14 inch Sony PVM basically with a different name on the front. Just a different name plate down here and here it's practically identical to the 14 inch Sony PVM 14 M2 or 1353MD, that type of a unit. But today this one's got some issues and it's going to be the first one that's going to be torn down all the way. We're going to recap it and then I'm also going to do some uh, different things with the shell. I'm basically going to try to take this apart as far apart as I can and rebuild it. And uh, hopefully it'll be perfect, brand new, working once we get done with it because the tube is still really good and a lot of the parts are still really good but there is an issue with geometry. Today um, is going to be the first part so just up front I want everybody to know this is going to be a multi-part uh, episode where today I'm just going to have to tear it all down. I'm going to show you how I do that and just walk you and talk you through that while I'm doing it. Um, the reason I'm going to have to do this in a couple parts is I'm going to show you then after I get it apart how I'm going to have to make a list of all the capacitors I need and double check everything um, and what I'll be replacing and repairing. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into the uh, teardown. And the first thing as uh, Brutus goes in there and lays down over there to the left, we're going to do is take a uh, discharge tool and discharge the PVM and then I'll show you how about we'll go um, taking it apart and everything like that so first let's get the monitor turned around okay so back here at the tube and again nothing's plugged in and um, we're gonna go ahead and start by discharging this monitor and we'll let Brutus sit over there and and watch us as we go and uh, so if anything happens, you can take care of us. Um, I want you to take a notice if you ever do get a um, Olympus monitor, you can check. Once you open it, you'll see everything looks exactly the same as the Sony's I was talking about. And it says up here, Sony, even on some of the decals. Um, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and discharge this. And this is my discharge tool, which I will link to at the end of this video because I did make a video a couple months back on how I made it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to pick a nice point on here where it's um, the grounding uh, is looped into the whole monitor and it's easy on these. You can see all these green ground wires are going to a point. I like this point here where I've actually got a bunch of different ground wires and it is attached to the frame. And you know sometimes you want to try to just get that screwed just loosened a little bit so you can feed your wire under it and that's just what I'm doing here so that's kind of the spot now if you don't have that spot you can pick the corners but on this monitor all that's connected to the same metal so it's a really good safe spot to make sure you're grounded there we go Test it, pull it hard, see, it's definitely in there. And then I've got my gloves, which I've done a video on before. And you don't probably need this, but just to be safe, I like to wear gloves and be safe. These are my electrical gloves, they're high quality. They're about a hundred bucks. And uh, here's my tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slip this tool in, make sure my cord's nice and out of the way. And uh, we're going to just slip it under this anode cap and kind of feel around there. And it's okay if that pops up like that a little bit. That's, that's okay. We're not trying to actually get this. I mean, it might come out, but that's not what we're trying to do, really. What we're trying to do first is to just go in there and just use one hand again. Um, always use one hand. But if you look, you can see the metal. So... This monitor hasn't even been turned on in a while, so I see the metal right there, and, I, and it's definitely discharged and ready to come out. So there was no pop. Sometimes these monitors will discharge themselves, and then, you know, there's really no... Uh, thankfully, these, these do a great job of doing that, discharging themselves for the most part. So that's gotten pretty well undone right there. And there we have our anode cap out. And you can see here... We're discharged and safe to touch, so this is the two metal points that you want to make contact with. 
when you're discharging the monitor. Sometimes you'll hear a tick, sometimes you'll hear nothing like we just did. So now, we really don't have to worry about electrical current, but you do have to worry about it right here on your anode spot. I've heard of people shocking themselves by putting their finger over that and like hitting inside there because electricity can still stay inside that tube somewhat. Um, and you can even, you know, like I say, if you're wearing a, a wedding ring or anything else, that's what I, this guy did. He, he had a wedding ring on. It shocked him when he went across there and grabbed the tube thinking it had been discharged. Okay, back looking at this overhead view um, I've got set up. I want to take you through kind of the next steps here of how we're going to take this monitor apart and get to that deflection board, which is the board at the bottom where the flyback is. And um, some things we're going to go ahead and do while I'm working here. The first thing I want to get off, I think, is going to be the neck board just to get it out of the way and this input board. Now, when we're working on this input board down here, um, we can get it out of the way pretty easily. And you want to just loosen up your wires. Don't worry about them being all on these connections. So you can always take them out. And then there's a little tab here at the bottom where my right thumb is. It's a little tab right here. If you pull that out a little bit and lift up, that's how this board comes out. And there's one on each side. Try not to damage it and uh, you'll be okay because you don't want to damage it. So you can see here that that's kind of a, uh, a pain to get around. So we're gonna probably have to remove it initially and then we're gonna move from there to the neck board because we don't want to really hurt anything. So we're gonna take our time. Um, but you can see there's, there's these clamps that uh, if, you, if you remove them, you, you give yourself some more space. They're just these spacers and you can come back in when you're reassembling your monitor and use them again and then um, but what you want to do now while you're working back here is start marking anything if you're going to be pulling it out from where it goes except for you know some of this stuff it's pretty obvious like where it will go back in for instance there's some pin connectors down here that if you just wiggle them they come straight up be careful because you don't want to damage any of this stuff but like on the back of this board, I know that those are going to go back in that spot and they're not the same size and different colors actually. So I'm not as concerned about getting those, um, getting those marked out. And let's see here. So we've got a little card back there and it comes in here on this gray cable. And you got to sort of work your way through and see what you're going to need to disconnect and where it's going to connect from. So, I'll leave those down there. You're going to work with here. There's a ground setup. I know you can't see a lot of this from this camera view. So, it looks like these three right here will need to come out from the back of our um, just our, PV, our board right here to begin with, and then those go and attach to spots in the front of the PVM. So. What we're going to want to do is use a magic marker and just make a little mark and kind of match up where those things work. Of course, some of these, like on the back here, these, these are color coordinated. The ones you really got to be concerned with is anything that you may forget. Um, like these are all, none of those are similar enough. Like they're all different sizes, so I'll know exactly where those will go, at least if I, um, if I forget somehow. I'll know exactly where those are going. And um, I'm not going to be rebuilding any of the capacitors on this input board. There's no problems with it. But I am going to be uh, unattaching a lot of these ground spots because that's what's left holding this board in place are these ground spots. You probably can't see. So if I'm moving around here, you see the last thing are these ground spots. So you can just take a screwdriver, undo those screws, pull out the cables. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll take a brief second and we'll come back after I finish that. Okay, so I've taken the screws out and I finally got this whole thing taken off and out of the way. Just take a look here. I did have to improvise and clip this one because I think this is like Loctited in here or something and that one went straight to the board into a solder point for a ground loop. So I'll probably just have to splice that back and uh, put some 
uh, tape around it or something and protect it, but that's fine. That's not a big deal. Just redo that and we'll just add it to another spot on here with, that wasn't in use because a couple of spots weren't in use. But that's your video input board for this model. And um, that's the first thing that's going to be out of the way. And now we're going to get to the more important stuff here. Some things you can see. So it's pretty obvious where this thing connects to. And what I'm going to do is, just to be safe, I'm going to put and take my marker and then I draw like a, a spot. You see how I drew that spot, how you can match up. And I'll do it unique to each connector just to make sure that uh, then I know which one's going to which. So see, I drew something right there, so I know that those two need to go on that spot. And, and these connectors probably aren't going to be the same, but the next thing I want to do is get this neck board out of the way. So you see some of these will have, you just need to check these and make sure you don't rip them up. Um, make sure you get the clips right. They usually have a clip on them that helps you open them. So there's one, and then there's another two connectors on the other side. And and then I've got the bottom black cable that I'm removing now next. Now, that's everything from my there we go. From my neck board here. And the last thing that's there is this little bit of epoxy. And I had a question that I went over about epoxy. And the first thing I want to do is just check the integrity of the epoxy. Um, a lot of times it just starts to break apart if you just wiggle a little. It's acto knife that's uh, just be careful not to damage anything. But if you usually just cut into it a little bit, uh, it'll make it at least break apart to the point where you can get it off to the most of the part. See, so just work it off, and um, that should probably be enough to at least get the neck board off. And I just give this usually a little wiggle back and forth and it starts to come. You don't want to really bend your pins. You want to come straight back. Usually use two hands to come back so you don't bend those pins up. And so there you have it. That's our neck board right there. And then, you know, before we reseat this, we'll clean all this old epoxy off. It usually just pick it off with your fingers and the exacto knife comes right off and then you can even see I'm gonna zoom in here so just take care of that just know that in the quality you can see how some of these pins now they're not bad or anything but they did bend a little bit because they're very soft you don't want to you don't want to hurt these pins okay be careful this is actually just a little spacer that's on top of here that black thing uh, but see you can just pull just be gentle with this stuff and you should be fine take your time you know so that's how you get rid of the neck board and that's uh, all we're gonna do for that okay we're switched around here and um, you need to notice again we've still got some connection points to be concerned with this one over here actually connects to the yoke and it's very large and um, unique and should just slipped right out. There's might be a connection. Oh, yeah, there's a little thing right here. So you can just look around and see if you can find what's holding that in place. And I can't tell whether that's on the. There we go. There you go. That one. And that's. I'm sure that's unique. There's not another plug that looks like that, and that's marked already pretty much. So most of the time you won't have to worry about that. Um, now at the very front. Uh, look at this. Once you get this thing disassembled, this whole black tray right here, don't worry about getting that board out yet. It comes out and slides out. That's what I wanted to show from this angle. It starts to slide out. Just make sure that the wires are all good. And Okay, one thing I did was there was a board under there, under the power supply that I pulled out. That's, that's easy. I mean, that's some kind of uh, board Sony added, and there's only one spot for it. So. That'll go back in later, but uh, that needed to be pulled so I wouldn't damage it. And then I could pull this out a little further and get to these connectors up in the front um, to pull them out. And 
wiggle with them. So they're all tied together. It should be easy to put back together once we get our board recapped. And then we've got two more over here that need to be wiggled out. A white one. And then thankfully Sony changed colors because these two must be the same size. A black one. And that's all I see that's connected and this should just slide right out. If I've got it correct, I'm going to have to move some of these screw old holders out. Let me make sure I'm not missing some spot at the bottom. Pull it because it slides on the track, kind of. And then make sure that the track doesn't just you kind of pull it out and pull it off the track like anything. Should just slide out the whole board unit here. Of course, I don't want to mess anything up, but gotta get it out. And it's definitely hanging up in there on something that we're missing because I'm not doing that right. Um, just gonna keep rolling and try to get this thing out. Let's see. Okay, so as I thought, it really wasn't anything. Um, just the cables were kind of stiff, and then you had to work around these tabs on the sides. They're meant to hold everything in place. Some of these wires I'm just going to leave in place on the board. And as I remove this, I'm going to make sure that nothing's still connected. There's, see, there's a little one up front I didn't see. And that appears to be it, but there might be something... Oh, there's a little black connector up front too there, so you've always got to be careful. And then lastly, make sure we get up here and get our anode cap off of this um, this guy here, which opens up, lets him out, and there we have it. So, long way around doing all that. But, as you can see now, this is all that's left inside the PVM. Let's just take a look here. And uh, that board does slip out nicely. That way this thing could just sit here like it is. And um, we'll work on the uh, component board. Let's take a closer look now at the whole deflection board. Okay, everybody. So here we are back and inside now with the deflection board and actually main board pretty much. And I'm sure this one like the other one's broken down into sections, but you can see just how many capacitors we're gonna be working with on this. Yeah, so I've estimated, I don't know, it looks like about 90 or more capacitors on this board. I'll replace every single one of them. And I know that there's a service manual out there. I'm sure that's got them all listed in it. But just to be safe, um, I'm actually going to go through myself and I'll just go through this thing systematically and by hand I'm going to count all the capacitors, document them, write them down, what they are. And then I'm going to go to the website that I use, Mouser, and I'll actually order all the capacitors. A lot of them are probably going to be the same, so it won't be as tedious as it sounds, but I will do that individually. I'll get all the capacitors ordered and then the next step will be individually recapping this like that's the way I do it I usually go and I pull one capacitor at a time replace it um, and do that systematically through the whole board it'll take a couple hours uh, but it'll be done right and then we'll hook it back up and it'll work and it'll be ready for calibration but that's going to end this first part I really appreciate it if you took the time to watch this entire video Please look for the second one and um, we'll get it done. It, it will be a couple weeks while we're waiting on the parts to come in. Uh, I'm also going to do some work on the shell, so keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. Please, 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 if you enjoyed this at all, give it a like and uh, feel free to share it. That, that helps a lot on the channel. Uh, thanks again for watching Retro Tech. I'm Steve and have a great day.